you all of you. Carol, you know, is this typical Labour, always got the hand out or not? Typically, you know, one set of principles for, for Labour, another set for the rest of us. This woman is a towering hypocrite. She talks about the Tories not tackling the housing crisis and she's part of it. Filling her boots, courtesy of the state, uh, on 90 grand, as you say, nearly 90 grand, because she has her MP salary, plus she has the four grand, £4,300, I think it is, the London, what they call London waiting. Um, you know, this is a case, you know, if there's 23,000 people in your area, desperate people on the housing list, and she knows that, she absolutely knows that, it's a, it's a matter of moral morals, a matter of principle, a matter of duty to give up that flat. She admitted two years ago she doesn't really need it. She said very glibly, I don't really need this now. So why is she still in it? Well, probably because it's, as you say, it's been paid for by the state. It's a nice riverside property. She maybe couldn't afford to pay for that by herself. But it's it's astonishing that, that she has got away with this. If this was a Tory MP living in a, in a council flat place, whatever it is, there would be hell to pay. Hell. Yeah. And there's also questions raised over how she got this flat in the first place, that she was she was a former housing advisor in the borough, and, and it was said at the time that she had an understanding of how the system worked. So that ought to be looked into as well. Okay. But it's shocking. All right, I'll come back to you. Mike, you know, this is a pretty bad luck, is it not? I mean, is this not a window into benefits Britain that awaits us if we have a Starmer government? I mean, she's exactly right in saying that the government have no solutions to the housing crisis. We haven't built enough housing for the last 13 years. Lots of people uh, can't get on the housing ladder, and that's not just in London, it's across Britain. There's nowhere near enough social housing, as it evidenced by the fact that in Tower Hamlets there's 20,000 people on the waiting list. She's clogging it up. And that, She's again, is, is, is in up, every but... other part of Britain as well. It is odd, I admit, that an MP is living in social housing, but it's important to say that we are not paying for it. She is paying rent on that property, and that rent will go to the social housing provider, whether that's the council it's or whether that's the... It's rent, Mike. It's a it is a subsidised rent, but also well, she's not receiving benefits either. So, and you said both of those things in your introduction. So she's paying for it out of her salary. We are not. But that paying is her... a benefit. No, it isn't. It, that is a benefit. She has a job. Is a benefit. She has a job, and she gets paid for that job out grand. of her out of her payment. She is paying rent on that property, as everybody else in social housing. She has said is. she doesn't need it. She said that she shouldn't really. She did say that. I mean, one thing that you guys haven't mentioned this comments. evening, and you, and you may not know this, I, I fully understand. She is currently an MP, mm. but uh, she's been what's called deselected by her local Labour Party. <laughs> so she's got to go through a reselection process. I can't quite remember the reasons mm. for that. So she may be out of a job in six months' time when we get to the general election. Yeah. So she's probably sitting there right now thinking, I'm going to face through selection. I might, she, to live in, I might need to live in this house. Why has she been deselected? I can't actually remember the reasons why. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Belinda, your, your views are on this. I mean, I think most people will find it sticky in the craw somewhat that somebody on mm. just shy, reportedly, of, of £90,000 a year could have any kind of leg up whatsoever. I'd love to be on ninety grand a year and have subsidised rent. I mean, so would everyone. I think it is a moral issue, as Carol said. I also think, I mean, God forbid socialists ever practise what they preach, um, but to be standing there as if you're for the working class, the working people, the poor, and what I I see as abusing the taxpayer because it is abusing the taxpayer this it's almost like for me in my opinion stealing money I saw it going on, on a lot in the EU Parliament as well as if it was just a money tree and not actually the wages of you know nurses and teachers and, and bin men that are actually going to, to subsidize this highly paid MP in a council house I think it's massive she's like the female version of Harry Lineker, Gary Lineker mm. it's massively I, I hypocritical thinking that there's a limit to how much you can earn uh, right. Well, in, I looked. In, I, no, I looked into the, this. the limit is ninety grand. Is, it can, in, in this particular borough, it is which is shocking grand. in itself. Shocking. Frankly, that needs to be changed. That's shocking in itself. But I actually is, find she's that staggering that, mm. yeah, that it should too. be. I don't know if that's per flat or per person. If it's per flat, it should be half that. If it's per mm. person, it should be about a third of that. That's my that's my wider point, right? Yeah, really, which completely. is and it points out a kind of benefits Britain thing, which mm. is that clearly, clearly, it is incredibly easy to find yourself on some form of benefits. I mean, well, some, something like thirty million people in the UK were on some form 50 of odd benefit. Percent, 50 yeah. odd percent are on some kind of... But we are under a Tory government. I mean, you know, there, there has to be some responsibility taken by those in power Completely. that this is allowed to happen because people will use every loophole, mm. every little sneaky way they can to get around the system and abuse the taxpayer if they can. They've been green-lighted. That's the reason why it's benefits you Britain You guys have a moment. very low view of human nature and of British people. Well, I, mean, I do, I at it, the moment. I, it, I genuinely find that quite no, sad. I think the I mean, taxpayers I think, being I think abused. I have a much higher opinion of the British people. I don't think people are scratched. I think people generally want to work hard and get on well, in life. Well, you know there are two and a half million people currently not working. The value of benefits 
in this country has absolutely fallen off a cliff in the are last 30 kidding? years. Are you kidding? You are joking. But, I mean, there was, a, there was a big piece about it that on Sunday, Gordon Brown was talking about it, and the fact that poorer people on benefits now, they're paying a staggering amount of their income on basic needs like energy and fuel, partly because energy and fuel prices have gone up. 50-odd percent of people in this country are on some Most of those, benefits. most of those will be top-ups. Not but most that, of those. That you, is you because... You can't just generally say most That is of another those result of government failure. The real, the real value of wages in this country hasn't gone up since 2006, which is a staggering indictment on the failure of this government to manage the economy but, but, properly, yeah, but which does, of does... course, mean that people then need to apply for benefits. But that, does, that does not mean we have a higher burden than, I think, since World War II, anyway. Of tax. Of, of people. Yes. Yeah, but, but that tax is paid by people who do go yes. out and earn <laughs> money. The vast money, majority right? of so, people on benefits are also working mm. because people go out and work, but well, they work, say that. but you they get a low say. wage. All right, well, well, I can say it because it's true. It's, it's not they, a, they, get, so they get paid a low wage and then they then Tell need to the go on benefits. Do you think the vast majority on will check it? What is the, what is the percentage you think? Or on working and on benefits. What does that mean? I can't remember the start off the of top of my head, but I'm very happy to look into it in the book. Yeah, so am I, yeah. All right, well, I mean, there are, look, there are some stats. So 22.6 million people were claiming some form of benefits in England, Scotland and Wales as of August 2023. Uh, when it comes to universal credit, uh, £59.8 billion a year as of uh, October, apparently. Um, it's expected that £14.3 billion will be spent on housing benefits, etc., etc., etc. I mean, this is a heck of a lot of money that is being paid by uh, the more well-off in society. And uh, it does appear to me, Belinda, that, that the argument to that is, oh, we'll make them pay more. I, I just don't know whether or not that's actually quite ungrateful. Now, there, there is a real problem in this country. 18% of um, those able to work in the working age group mm. and that don't have a disability, 18% of the population of Manchester... Yeah. are on benefits. This is not right. It is not healthy. There's so much dignity to work as well. I think throwing people on the scrap heap of never-ending never ending benefits rather than saying, no, you've got, to get, you've got to get a job. And you talk about wages. Well, if Labour gets in, I think inflation's going to go through the roof again because they're going to submit to all the unions. Final, final quick word to you, Mike, on this. I mean, the, the overarching concern here is that if Labour come in, it would be a green light for anyone who fancies claiming benefits. Well, of course it won't. I mean, far from it. I mean, what Labour will do is invest in the economy so that more jobs are created. I mean, there was something the other day, say, I can't remember what, it, the, what this, the stat was, but again, I'll look at it in the break. That's right, yeah. But there's, there's genu there would have been millions more jobs had the government done, A, a better job managing the economy and did a better job with the Brexit outcome. All right.